Okay, well, good afternoon, folks. Now, I often get accused of talking rubbish when I'm on these webinars. Uh, and today, those of you who think that's all I do, you're going to be right. Because today we're talking about rubbish, or I guess more appropriately, wipes. Now, every facility in business uh, that we go to has them on hand. There's something we reach for. Well, I hope we do, because you're supposed to be cleaning before and cleaning after you've used equipment. And they're used to ensure our hygiene. But how much do we really know about these little white triangle, little white rectangles uh, that we use every day? And are the cleaning products we're using doing what they're claiming to do? Are they keeping our, your clients, staff, members, and your business COVID safe? Last time I had a discussion with Phil about wipes, I was actually very surprised to learn, I think, and Phil will correct me if I'm wrong here, that they're actually based on plastic, um, which, which I found quite um, incredible. I had, didn't realise that, even though I use them every day when I go to the gym. So today we're going to try and clear up some of the urban legends and urban myths about wipes. Are they biodegradable? Are they the same as compostable wipes? Have they got TGA approval? Indeed, what is TGA? Where do fitness wipes end up? We all see them go into the bags in our gyms, but where do they go from there? How many wipes are used in Australian fitness centres every year by the 7 million Australians who go to a fitness centre? And what does that equate to in terms of tonnes of plastic? And much more today. So today I'm joined by two experts in rubbish. Uh, we might leave it at that uh, they, um, they are rubbish experts. Phil Scardinio, the managing director and founder of Clean Life, and Corey White, the director and co-founder of Clean Life of Well. So welcome, Phil and Corey. I can't wait to hear you educate us about rubbish. Um, so before we get started, what is Clean Life? Who or what is Clean Life? Thanks, Barry. Yeah, look, uh, we're an Australian manufacturer based here in Adelaide, South Australia. Uh, we manufacture all types of wet wipes, primarily in the medical space, but for consumers and industrial. Uh, we make wipes that are in bulk, as you mentioned, like the trolley type wipe. We make canister wipes, uh, sachet and soft pack wipes shortly. Um, so we're really an end-to-end -end facility. We've got our own labs here on site with our, our chemists here that developed the product and also our own manufacturing facility. And then we distribute around the country. Um, from our end, you know, we spend a lot of time on not just the development of a product, but as you mentioned about the plastic piece, when Corey and I were developing this business and we sort of delved into it further, we were gobsmacked by the amount of plastic waste and we're pretty passionate environmental, uh, I wouldn't say environmentalists, but environmental passionates and diehards in terms of outdoors and what does the oceans, etc. And those figures really stunned us. And so we thought, well, while we're in the mode of developing this business, let's make a change, not just being Australian made, but more importantly, having products that are not impacting the environment. And if I had to share some of those stats with you and your, and your community, you'd be very, very surprised on how much plastic waste there is and greenhouse carbon emissions we're creating out of that. Okay, so just to remind people that are participating in this webinar, if you have any questions, can you put them in the Q&A box? Now, Phil and Corey, uh, being an ex-Adelaide boy, um, I'm pretty aware that South Australia has always been in the lead in terms of recycling, um, disposables, uh, and those sort of things. I think just recently, the government down there, or pre-election, pre, pre announced they're getting rid of single-use straws or something like that as well. Um, so you, you have contracts with the South Australian Health Department, I believe, or the government down there. And so what, what other products, sorry, what other companies or sectors do you deal with besides our sector? Uh, well, look, fitness industry is quite large, but obviously supermarkets, uh, all those shopping trolleys that are used, we're dealing with all the independents and now some of the majors that are, are making that chain. Um, we've got clients like BHP that use it on their facilities out at Roxby and um, on their mining sites because it's an OH&S issue now, but they're also very conscious of zero emissions and, and cutting out plastic. Um, obviously medical, as we said, and the consumer piece. You know, if we're now developing products from baby wipes right through to body and deodorizing wipes as well uh, and getting into the flushable technology. So it's, we've started something that we thought was a really small piece and it's just very, it's broadened very much so. 
Um, and you know, Corey might have a bit more to, to share on that. Piece yeah, I think, I think it, it just keeps extending and we keep finding new sectors of where plastic wipes are used. And even when you go into a supermarket and look on the shelf, you'll see 95% um, of wipes on the shelf are um, actually plastic and the other 5% are quite often green washed or claim things like biodegradable as well, uh, certified compostable, which we'll cover later in the presentation. No, thanks, Corey. You just mentioned supermarkets. And I must admit, when you go in the supermarket now, it seems every product that's there claims to kill COVID-19. Some of these products, um, I would be very doubtful if they actually did do that. But nevertheless, they're making those claims. So how do we know if a wipe actually does kill COVID-19? Well, the Australian law on that, um, you actually can't make that claim unless you've got TJ listening. So there have been some companies being fined uh, by government and by the TGA uh, and the ACCC if they've made those claims that are unsubstantiated. But essentially, you know, we're in a good country where we've got the Therapeutic Goods Authority that makes sure that what is claimed is safe for consumers and, uh, and the general public. And hence, if you've got a COVID killing feature of your product, it must be registered on the ARTG or the TGA. And we know that fully well because our lab had developed products for COVID. Um, and now it's, it's people want that peace of mind and you don't need it in every workplace. But the fact is that if it kills COVID, it's gonna kill a lot of other bacteria as well. And it's just, it's this next benchmark level of having a product that meets your needs. And um, if there are companies or brands, as you mentioned, Barry, that you suspect they're not on their labeling or packaging, they should have an Austell number AUSL, and it's got an OSTEL number, that means it's registered with the TGA. If it doesn't, then you might want to delve in a little bit deeper because it can be misleading. Okay, so let, so for clarity's sake, Bill, uh, and this comes back to a, a personal experience I had in one of the gyms I used to go to. Um, I challenged the materials that were being used by the facility and they said, no, see, it says on the label, kills germs. And I said, well, that's nice, but I'm not sure if germs and COVID are the same thing. Are they the same thing? Uh, no, no, look, there's, um, I mean, there's a lot of antibacterial and disinfectant products that kill um, E. coli and salmonella, et cetera, and the common bacteria. But COVID is a different test altogether, particularly when it's a wipe or a spray. And it's, I think from memory, it's another 12 weeks of testing and all the data that is presented because it's not just the killing of it, it's the kill time. Um, and yeah, you've just got to back that up. And then once you've got your test data, the big thing is then how that information is presented on the label, which the TGA are really stringent on, on, on how things are marked and labeled. Okay, so you've mentioned TGA a couple of things. That's a good acronym. What does TGA actually stand for? And how does a company go about getting them? Is it, is it easy? Is it automatic? You just apply and you, it's ticked or what? <laughs> no, it's quite, quite laborious actually. Um, Therapeutic Goods Authority, um, based in Canberra, so it's a it's a government department. So you there's criteria. You can anyone can check it out on the TGA and do it. You can check it, any product you want, and do a search, and it should come up with a name if it's got a listing. And if you want to go down the path of a TGA approved product, you've got to go apply. Then there's a whole lot of testing criteria, and you've got to use TGA accredited laboratories to test your product. And then once it's passed, that information is presented back to the TGA for your final listing. So it, it took us around about 13, 14 months to get that um, by the time you start and finish. And it depends on what classification. So yeah, it's not something you can just sort of apply and anyone get. And um, so it is good that it sort of, it, it does make you jump some hurdles and go through some hoops to get there, but it, you know, that's their job to keep the community safe. Okay, so it gives credibility to the product independently assessed, which is which is great because it means that those false claims that some of the other companies may be making can't be made. Now we've talked about biodegradable and compostable. Is that one and the same thing? You want to get on that? Uh, no, yeah, definitely not. So, so as you see on your screen here, compostable uh, will break down in twelve weeks. Um, and it must actually have some certification that it goes through to be tested, um, that it will do that. Biodegradable is, it can be applied to pretty much anything and is just a loose term 
uh, these days that will break down over time, but um, may actually contain microplastics and, and bits and pieces which can leak through uh, landfill liners and the likes. So they're a, they're a very different beast. Um, to, to throw something into a green bin, um, like an organic green bin, it must be compostable. Yeah, and on, on that too, um, Barry, com, you know, biodegradable, now dealing with a lot of the waste experts out there, they're trying to actually take that terminology out of the dictionary, out of the waste dictionary, because it is very misleading. And you can have something that can break down in a decade and it's still classified as biodegradable, whereas compostable is now the term that they want. So there's three terms in the waste industry you want to go with, compostable, recyclable, or reusable. So there are some you know, plastics that are recyclable. Things like glass can be reusable, but compostable, as Corey mentioned, has got to break down in 12 weeks. And you know everything that's compostable is biodegradable. That's really important to remember, but not everything that's biodegradable is compostable. And if it, if it breaks down and it can go into earth and soil, then it's compostable. Okay, so compostable is the gold, gold standard, basically, is what we're saying. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're seeing Australia's major retailers and industry leaders pushing for that now. Okay, so how do we know if a wipe's actually compostable? There'll be, you'll have certification uh, on, the, on the actual product. Um, and in some cases, it can be a, a European certification, which is EN 13432. Um, and and a lot of we've we've got that as well, and we take that to some local composters, and they approve that as a, a product that's fine for use here. And then there's an Australian standard, which is an industrial composting approval or a home composting approval standard. Okay, so just as I was happy to give a shout out to Adelaide you know, in its um, its progress in terms of being in the recycling and um, compostable, etc. We'd hope to be able to support Australian industry as well. So how do we know if a wipe has been made in Australia or it's coming from overseas? Uh, look, you know, there's, um, there are many companies that will state that they, it's made in Australia, what percentage of their products made in Australia. You know, it, that is up, it can be contentious at times. We as a company have made the, the decision that we go through the Australian Made campaign because they audit your process. So they'll come down, they'll check out your manufacturing process, they'll check your raw material listing and they understand um, what percentage of what you're doing is in here in Australia from a value added side of things. Um, you know, normally you can tell by just the packaging, the availability these days, how quick it's available and also um, price point. And when I say that, surprisingly, in our industry, a lot of people think that Australian made wipes are more expensive but we've proven to the industry, your industry or the Oz Active industry and beyond that we can make a, a product here in Australia. We start off with a master fabric piece that we convert. We we've got a textile cutting line. We've got a dosing plant and then we cut and perforate or package up. And it's more cost effective than a bamboo wipe or another compostable wipe coming out of China or overseas. And it's definitely um, more cost effective than even the plastic based wipes, which we were talking about. And when we when people understand the impact of plastic in this industry, they then understand the need to make this push to go towards compostable very, very quickly. Because, you know, Corey and I go to a gym. Um, and as you mentioned, Barry, you pull it out, you pull the wipe out and you use it. And I've got to tell you, it's gu I'm guilty sometimes knowing what, what's at the gym that I'm at with what they're using or if they haven't been using our wipes. And that's really important to understand that we're all able to make change here. And it, the, these sorts of movements come from the ground up. And you know, I was one of the older guys that goes to the gym with me, he takes his own rag and his spray bottle because he just hates putting even uh, any wipe into the bin because of knowing what it is. So these are now stances that um, we're seeing is starting to happen. Some responsible business owners are wanting to push that from their end and even some of the larger groups. But, you know, there's a number uh, that Corey and I, and, and this is all external data that we've had, but over 500 million wipes were used in the fitness industry last year. And that was during COVID. Now, the plastic straw piece that, you know, was well documented, it was on the, the war on plastic on the ABC from Craig Rowcastle. 
they were talking about plastic straws and how it, how bad an impact that was on the industry and in the environment. And we were talking about 800 tonnes, was it, Corey? 800,000. 800, 800, uh, yeah, 800,000 kilos, 800, 800 yeah. tonne yeah. of plastic. The number of plastic wipes used in the industry in fitness alone, the number here five, is five, 570 tonne. 570 so. tonne yeah. just with the fitness industry. Now, if you take that into account, now, you know, we're not saying that the fitness industry are the biggest abusers of it. Shopping centres with their supermarket trolley wipes are on par with that. And then when you start to go into the medical industry and the, and the, the baby industry, it's just the numbers are mind-boggling. But 500 tonne of plastic just from fitness industry or gym users, yoga classes, Pilates classes, there's a big impact we could have in, as, a, as a community in Australia by reducing plastic in gyms to disinfect because we do need to disinfect and globally wipes are on the rise they're being used everywhere but it doesn't have to be a plastic contributor into landfill i, I think um phil the other thing there is that you know the seven million or so australians that go to a gym at least once a year and that's not my data it's coming out of osplay seven million australians going to a gym at least once a year they go there to to feel good um, they're interested in well-being of themselves in the local community. And by definition, I would hope that they're interested in the future of our community and our society and therefore want to do something about, you know, the planet, the environment and all the rest of it. So those figures you're quoting there are quite mind boggling. Um, I mean, I probably use 10 or a dozen each time I go to the gym and you times that by 7 million, it doesn't take, uh, you know, to get there how many times a day, et cetera. How many times a week? So where do these wipes end up? I mean, I see them disappear in the black bags as they go out of the gym, but where do they go? Uh, yeah, well, they end up in in landfill and they take, you know, over they, there's estimates, it depends on the landfill, but it's over 500 years to break down versus 90 to 120 days for a compostable wipe to break down. So it's, it's chalk and cheese. Well, do they also uh, contribute to greenhouse? Because that's very much topical with the election about three weeks away. Well, you know, Barry, this is we've just we engaged some independent consultants because we didn't want to come up with the numbers ourselves. We wanted an independent to, to look at this, and actually, what they came back with was worse figures than what we thought. Um, but on greenhouse gas, this is the real big one that I think everyone needs to understand. When you look at a wet wipe, eighty percent of it is water. So when you dry that wipe out, when you weigh it when it's wet and when you weigh it when it's dry, it's normally about 20% of that weight. Now out of that water, there's about 0.5% of the active that's used in that water to kill the germs or the bugs. And I know that just from our own formulations. Now, when we import wipes into Australia, we are importing water in these shipping containers. And the data that came back to us, which really still guilts me, uh, when I see this, is that we are, is almost 7,000 uh, kilos, was it 7,000 kilos, 7,000 ton, 7,000 ton, sorry, of carbon just in the shipping process of imported wet wipes into this country. Now, that is not how it's made over there, not the internal processes. Now, that was based on a figure if you assume that everything came out of Shanghai to Melbourne on, a, on that, that travel route. But we know there's wipes in Australia that come out of the US, out of Europe. But when you take all that into account, we are creating a lot of carbon in the atmosphere just from the shipping process. Now, when, you, when you're looking at stuff that's made local, the statistics that came back to us in the data was that it was more than 53% less uh, carbon hungry to produce here. And that's a great start for us. And, for, and from our position, we wanna cut that down even further but at least from our end, we know we've got the fabric that's compostable. So that's a big thing from a plastic free side of things. And secondly, making it here. And there is carbon that you generate to send it from Adelaide to Melbourne, Brisbane, et cetera. However, that's like, you know, a freckle on, on the backside of an elephant compared to the number of what carbon's generated out of bringing stuff on a ship. And a shipping container that might weigh 20 tonne, you know, you've got two tonne of it, actually it's fabric, 18 tonne of it's water. Because of, the, because of that fact. And so that's where, as you mentioned, from an election side, we're surprising there's are, there are a lot of politicians and councils and shires around the country that now are really focused on this because they need to educate behaviour. And this is, you know, every time you pull that wipe out, 
you feel how wet it is. But as I said, that's water that's just been imported where we don't need to do that. Yeah, and local government, you're right, so where I live here in Sydney, the local government, uh, they provide these green Fogo bags, which are used for um, food waste and that sort of gear, and they are compostable as I'm led to believe. I'm going to check it when I get home tonight now, having listened to you guys make sure they are, because we use them all the time. Is uh, the clean life swipes, I mean, I assume they're safe to use on any type of equipment and that sort of gear? Uh, look, we've got different wipes for different applications, but the, the ones that we recommend, our TJ listed wipe and our AS general antibacterial wipe uh, is definitely safe. You know, we've, we've got a lot of clients in the Pilates space that use it on, Pilates, on the reformers, uh, yoga mats, and all the general gym equipment. We don't, no, we don't use anything that's alcohol-based on the upholstery because that can stain or dry out or damage, but these have no effect at all um, on general gym equipment metal bars, you know, um, machine, bike machines, running machines, et cetera, rowing machines, the whole lot. It's fairly safe. And what about people that might have, um, you know, hypo allergies or whatever? Well, that was part of the testing we've had done as well. And there's been nothing in there that's an irritant in our product. So look, you know, there might always be the odd person who's got very high sensitivities um, to something, but you know, that could happen with anything. But for the, the majority of the public, um, they're safe to use. And that, again, comes back to having a product that you've got listed with the TGA, that uh, you've got that reassurance. Yeah. I mean, this is a fairly silly question, but why would a short of gym swap over to Clean Life compostable? Well, pretty, Barry, it's, yeah, good question. So going back to that figure, 500 million wipes a year um, used in the gym industry. And the crazy thing is, they could all be compostable tomorrow instead of plastic without a change in practice, without a change in cost, um, working for us with the price comparisons of people that have already switched over. Uh, so it's not like we've got a, we're changing a practice completely. The, 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 um, the solution's there. In fact, right it's, now. It's, it's actually a cost saver that yeah. was offered people um, when they understand. I mean, those general wipes that go into these sorts of, the other, the other thing we've done is like, these are your general wall mounted units that are, um, I'm sure you can see there, they're on the walls of um, gyms and we see these ones in supermarkets, et cetera, you know, but uh, you pull down. Having a facility here, we've got the ability to, we don't want people to just go and buy a dispenser that can take the clean life product. So what we've done is we've customized products to fit these units because we can. You know, we realize that business owners have been hit hard, particularly in the fitness industry. We know that first up this end with our support we've done over the last 12 months in this industry. And so we're not asking these owners to buy new dispensing equipment, even the floor mounted ones. Um, we've basically made the product you know, that just fits it. So there's the, the wipes fit into those, those units and you pull out, we've got a few different sizes. And you know, I had a client recently that was bringing some dispensers out of the US and asked us if we could customize it and we could do that for them. Um, and that's one of the advantages of being here. I mean, you know, if we'd had this camera, we could take it out to our plant, which we might do one, one time. You can see the product actually being made then and there. And that's that's what we've got the ability to do. So it's it gives the peace of mind that this is not an expense. A lot of people think going environmental, doing something that's green is going to cost me more. And I know that, you know, my wife and I, when we go shopping, we look at different detergents and liquids. And sometimes those green products are, the, the certified ones are more expensive. But in our case, you know, we've found that with a lot of the imported wet wipes that are hitting the gym market, they go through so many different layers of channels to get there. And we literally are direct from Adelaide to the gyms. Yeah, and you could also argue, Phil, that even if they were more expensive, but you're saying that they're not, which is great, but even if they were, there's the cost to the environment in the future. We don't do something about this now anyway, and we've got to all play our part. If, if the plastic, if your clean life plastic free wraps, um, sorry, wipes end up in landfill and so does the plastic ones, what, what's the, um, you know, what's the difference? Uh, the main, the main differences are uh, ours will have a much lower carbon footprint to start with. Um, so, and then it goes into landfill. You've got a product that hasn't been made from virgin plastic in the, in the beginning. Uh, so the, the product itself is already lower footprint on the earth. Uh, once it's actually in, in the, um, 
in the landfill, the, the actual breakdown time can be quite, can be similar. So a, not, a compostable wipe will take a long time to break down in a landfill. Um, however, it's it won't be leaching any microplastics and breaking down into microplastics, which can then end up deeper in the soils underneath the landfill liner. Yeah, and that's one of the big big things that's been coming out from the industry now is the microplastics that uh, are breaking down they find their way back into food sources or even animal sources in, and um, you know we're ingesting that sort of stuff. Whereas a compostable wipe, it might still stay in landfill because it hasn't gone through the composting process, but it's not contributing to any toxins into the environment. Yeah. And that's really important. So we still want our product to be put into a green bin or an organic bin. And we understand not all regions of Australia are, are there yet, but if it does go into general waste, and we've seen that it's unavoidable sometimes, it's not the issue that you've got with plastics that sit there. Yeah. And are there any other environmental, you know, benefits or advantages in using the clean life wipes? Well, uh, environmental, I mean, Corey mentioned the carbon footprint. I don't think everyone understands how impactful that is in Australia. But then, you know, we've we set this plant up because of the sovereign capability part as well, you know, where um when you've got your raw materials that come from Australia, you've got your materials that are then shipped back out, the amount of transport uh, carbon that's generated, and also the fact that you know we've kept the, the supply chain here, so there's more flow and effect in terms of what we're using from uh, our raw material suppliers hasn't had to travel always from the other side of the world either. So you know you try and keep like all the chemicals we take, some of the products we make got fragrances, they're all sourced locally. And whether they're certified organic or, or organic in themselves, but they don't have to go and travel from China or the US to get here. They're locally sourced. And so there's that flow on effect that that benefits. And that's where people need to understand that when you buy an imported product sometimes, and I'm not bashing imports, but when we can avoid it, you don't know where else the travel piece has gone just to put the dosage into that wipe or that liquid from elsewhere. Um, where else is it traveled from to get there? And we can be a lot smarter about this. I mean, we are a smart country. We're a lucky country, but we need to really have these conversations now. And the fitness industry, you know, it makes sense that everyone's looking after themselves. We look after the planet while we're doing that. Yeah, and just to be crystal clear, clean life um, plastic free wraps are compost com compostable. Yeah, compostable wipes, correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what about the solution that it's dosed in? Is that safe for compost as well? Well, what happens with the dosing solution? I mean, it's a really good question because it comes up and you know, I had this conversation yesterday with one of the waste experts, but the fact is that, as I said, because there's so much moisture in a wipe, once it's used and it goes into compost, it's dried out. And the amount of moisture, you actually create compost from a moist environment. So when it goes into a compost process or a bio bin, you actually are creating moisture to get that bacteria process happening for things to break down. Uh, the amount of chemical that's in there and even, you know, we had a question came up about if you've cleaned the surface where there's been patients that have had COVID and it might have those pathogens or germs on there, is that going to create those germs into compost? And the answer is no. The amount of wipe that's used in a, the tonnage of compost to be created with all food waste, et cetera, is so minute, there's no contribution of it at all. It, those, those pathogens won't survive in that environment. Okay, so here we have a product which is made in Australia, uh, goes to our, our members' facilities direct from the manufacturer, is made at the highest gold standard, is price competitive, um, and is, is manufactured by a company that is concerned about the future. That's all fantastic, but have you got any, any discount for our members just to sort of put it into tin text? Uh, very, uh, you know, hustler. Um, well, look, as you might know, we already we do give us active, all our Oz active clients a 7% saving on products. So that's correct, Danica, isn't it? Yeah, I've got my, our, our, our bosses over there. And um, so there's 7% on our on our website. You type in the um, the code, which is fitness. fitness. There you go. Use or, But then again, uh, we've got a special at the moment on this, on this discussion that um, you can either select our COVID killing wipes or our general antibacterial ones, and you buy three boxes and you'll get a fourth for free. So our, our wipes come in a carton of three, um, 1,000 wipes to a roll, 
and you buy three cartons of them and the fourth one will come free. And for that, you use the code OZACTIVE at checkout and you'll get that offer. And 7% um, plus a free box, Barry, we can't do much more for you, mate. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to survive in Australian manufacturing. Well, what about the steak knives? Uh, we'll negotiate on that. The steak knives were the free box, but <laughs> the other thing is too, I'll just tell a lot of your, your, your uh, community that Corey and I are going to be at the fitness and wellness event next month in June. I don't think our stand's too far away from where you guys are. We're more than happy to have a, a chat and a chin wag to any of the members that are going to be over to see and we'll show them some of the, the other products we've got in our range and some of the concepts we've got, even with how to dispense and create compost in your own gym and make it a truly green gym. Oh, that's fantastic. There's a few questions that have popped up, Phil. Let me just go into these and we'll, we'll get into these. Um, I've been using Clinel. I know they have an ARTG number, but I'm guessing yep. they're not environmentally friendly. No. You have any suggestions to switch to preferably one that doesn't need a huge bulk order as I'm a PT? Yeah, you go back to the council. Yep. Yeah, the other one. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So, yeah, they look, great question. Clonel is a, a global leader in this space, coming out of the UK, but uh, the product's not made there. It's made in China. Um, and it is at the high, it is a very high standard because Corey's background in medical knows that that industry is used that very widely, but it's not compostable. Um, we've got our ARTG listing, and I can you can tell your client there that um, we definitely are very competitive against Clonel. They can take it in that canister there, or you can take the bulk wipe as well as I showed before um, to use it. From a PT's perspective, you can carry these around. They're quite robust and you dispense your, your wipe from the top and it'll kill COVID. So this is our go-to product up against um, Clonel. Okay. Second question from Mindy. I own a Pilates studio and I'm a little bit worried about the chemicals on the Swiss balls and smaller Pilates balls. Yeah, well, I can only going by um, what Phil said earlier, it's a very small percent um, of actives in the solution. Uh, and what I'd say to all the members as well, if there is any concerns like that, um, I mean, we've sold so, to so many gyms and so many Pilates and we haven't had any, any negative feedback in that regards. If there is any concerns, we can certainly um, send them a sample if they just want to email us at sales at clean life. Uh, and just type in Oz Active Sample and we'll, we'll work with them to uh, shoot them a sample and they can do a, a quick test. And look, even on those questions, Barry, we've got a lab here. So, you know, we've got our team of chemists that can answer those questions as well. If I understand the concern, if they're concerned about um, impact to the equipment, there's no impact from the chemicals on the equipment. If the concern is of the chemicals, the active chemicals, the chemicals are nothing more than what you'd get where you go and get your COVID jab or go to a hospital. There's, there's no toxic uh, odors or scents or fragrances at all. And that's one of the positives about this product uh, for that one, that's a COVID killing wipe. Okay, and a question from Florence. Are Clean Life 100% compostable? And apart from antibacterial wipes, do you offer alcohol wipes? Yes, we do. We, alcohol is a big part of our, uh, our isopropyl alcohol we make. We don't do ethanol, but we do isopropyl because it's medical grade. And our, our medical industry take that. So we do have uh, isopropyl alcohol wipes as well. And in regards to the compostability, um, they're compostable. Yeah, well. they're compostable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think we probably made that fairly clear over the last half an hour or so. Look, thanks, guys. Um, as again, as I say, and I was being a little bit facetious, but here we have a situation. We have an Australian company. You'd be you can actually purchase direct from the manufacturer. There's no middlemen involved. There's less. Um, carbon emissions with the transport, et cetera, made by Australians for Australians, compostable. Um, what more do you want? Price competitive, all the rest of it. Uh, I think there's, it's really a no brainer. Thanks, Corey. Thanks, Phil. Um, great to, you. to speak with you again. We'll see you at the FWA show um, and um, I'll come and get free samples from my gym as well. No Thanks, guys. Okay. Right. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.